There's something that might seem confusing about Iran. The country has an unelected supreme leader at the top, but it's also got a president who's democratically elected in votes that are far from perfect, but sure look pretty important. So is Iran a dictatorship or is it a democracy? As it turns out, it's both, and seeing that goes a long way to explaining why the country is the way it is. Iran as we know it today began with a revolution in 1979, which culminated in a simple referendum that March, Islamic Republic, yes or no. But what is an Islamic Republic? How can a country's government be both theocratic and representative? Iran's revolutionary leaders didn't really know the answer either, and they never agreed. So they ended up creating a government that has these two systems mashed together. Some parts are elected, some are unelected, and they're all tangled together in this kind of mess. Now there's a real tension between those two systems. Iranians elect, more or less democratically, the president, the parliament, which is called the Majlis, and a really important body called the Assembly of Experts. We'll get to that later. At the same time, there's the unelected theocracy. The supreme leader, the judiciary, the military, and others. Still, the supreme leader really does dominate Iran. He sets the tone for the country's politics and policies, including its nuclear program and its official hostility to the West. But what happens when the supreme leader dies or gets sick? Now, this turns out to be a really important question. The supreme leader is picked by a group of about 90 senior Iranian political and clerical leaders called the Assembly of Experts. But here's where Iran's Islamic Republic system gets important. The Assembly's members are elected in a national vote. This year, on February 26, Iranians will elect an entirely new Assembly of Experts for an eight-year term. Even Ali Khamenei, the current supreme leader, has acknowledged that he's likely to die in that time. Iranian politics are really split right now, with moderates rapidly rising after the nuclear deal helped to open up the economy. If they do well in February's election, then when Khamenei dies, they might pick a new supreme leader who shares their views. Now that could change Iran as we know it for a generation. Now this all goes to show that we think of Iran as just another dictatorship, and indeed it does have a dictator at the top, but it's also a democracy. It's got loud political disagreements, vigorous debates over its future. This election in February is a rare moment, once in a generation, when Iran's democratic elements become more powerful than its theocratic elements. Iranians have an opening here to try to transform their country. If they take it, and if they're successful, Iran could look very different for quite a while.